hello and welcome. You've just caught me having a quick clean and tidy up before I start cooking. Because this week, from our thrifty and frugal home here in Brittany in Northwest France, is all about how we save money in our kitchen and on our food budget. And who knows? You might pick up a tip or two that might save you money as well. Well, it's Thursday in our house and I'm going to be cooking sausages and onion gravy. This is mash, but there's an alternative, and veggies. I'm also going to be making quiche, not the salad, because the oven's going to be on. And I'm going to share with you how I do things like this to save a few euros here and there. Well, here's supper for tonight and tomorrow night and using up leftovers and changing the menu because I've got leftovers. All that money saving thrifty frugal stuff in my kitchen. So let's have a look what we've got. Got a bit of pastry left over from another day, just enough to make some quiche. Sausages, not leftovers, but leftovers in here, some onion gravy. So I'll cook the sausages, and when they're almost finished, pour the onion gravy over to finish it. Whilst the oven is on, I will pop the quiche in. Now, I wanted to have mashed potatoes with our sausages but I had leftover potatoes they've already got bits of batter on them they will be popped on a tray sprinkled with a bit of salt and we'll have some kind of roasty potatoes with our sausages and onion gravy carrots not looking too great but they will go with our dinner tonight it'll all be okay when it's done so I'm going to make a quiche leftover pastry peppers a bit not looking too great. Tomatoes on its last legs. Onion starting to turn a bit, but it'll all be okay. So this is what is going to make dinner tonight and dinner tomorrow night. So, sausages are in the oven. Potatoes, not mashed potatoes. Leftover potatoes, bit of oil, bit of salt, they are now going into the oven as well. And stretch out, we've got some carrots. They weren't looking too clever, but once peeled and sliced, they're fine. Got some frozen broccoli with it as well, because broccoli's not in season at the moment. It's too expensive. We switch to additions of frozen at this time of year. So now this is gonna go in the oven along with potatoes. So, my sausages and potatoes are in the oven. Whilst they went in there, that gave me the time to roll out my leftover pastry. It's not in a quiche dish, it's in a pie tin. Why is it in a pie tin? Because that's the first tin I put my hands on. Do I blind bake my pastry? No. I use metal tins, it makes it cook evenly. I've got five eggs beaten. I've got one sad onion, the outside bits weren't too good, I had to peel it twice. One sad pepper, chopped it up. 160 grams of lardons, they're still frozen. They will defrost when I cook them. I have one tomato left, which I will arrange on top of said quiche, just like we ate it in the 1970s. Why am I putting these items in? Because that's what I've got. If I had mushrooms, mushrooms would be going in. I have some Emmental cheese there. I will use about half of that. So again, about 100 grams of Emmental cheese. Great thing about quiche, it will be Friday night's dinner and Saturday's lunch.
oven on. I always try and cook whatever I need to cook all at the same time. So I'm not going to cook the quiche tomorrow and put the oven on tomorrow to have two lots of having the oven on and two lots of having the oven on costs. So I have fried off my lardons, my onion and my peppers. And I am just going to pop them in my pastry case. It's quite deep. I'm going to add a fistful of cheese. There's plenty of. That's loads of cheese. That's about 50 grams of cheese. I then have my five beaten eggs. I don't have any cream to go on top of this. I could put in more eggs. I don't have any more eggs. Let's stir it all through. It's plenty enough for the two of us there. That's why it's not a very big quiche. There's only the two of us. Whoopsie daisy. There we are. Stirred it all through. And I will pop my tomatoes on top. Two bits spare. I will just have those in a sandwich. Here is our finished quiche. Ready for tomorrow. So, did all the cooking. Only put the oven on once. Here is the finished dinner. Sausages, onion gravy, leftover potatoes that I've roasted, carrots and broccoli. Interesting thing about when you see food cooked on the TV, it's all about what it looks like and they will often present it to the plate barely cooked. This is our dinner, we're going to eat it so we've cooked it the way we like it. I'm going to go through my meal plan now for next week and how dinner becomes lunch and so on. Let's go through this. I make Breton buckwheat galettes. I will, the main part of this in this is ham. So I know in my cooking for the week I'm going to need a packet of ham. Pretty cheap, isn't it? Sliced ham. But when I make the galettes, I'll make enough for lunches throughout the week. Coronation chickens, pretty much my only expensive item on the menu next week. We two bake two chicken breasts that I'll cook and turn into this. Fish cakes, it's potato, it's tins of fish. The only thing I have to add to that next week is it needs a lemon zest in it, really freshens it up and the lemon juice gets squeezed on it. Now mock roast is sausages wrapped in bacon strips with roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, vegetables and gravy. It's a really lovely meal but it's ever so cheap. Lentil lasagna, like an ordinary ragu but no meat and I put lentils in. A rainbow risotto is all kinds of vegetables that I finely chop and I make into a risotto. Lardons, the good base flavour there, are little bacon pieces. Homemade pizza, again, I'll use the ham. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to need a packet of ham next week. So I know the only extra things from out of the ordinary I need to add to my shopping is parmesan, strips of bacon to go around the sausages, and a lemon. So. You're thinking like, well, where's the lunches, Jane? Where's the lunches? When I make fish cakes, I'll make enough for our dinner and we'll have the other ones for lunch the day after. The mock roast, I'll plate up two substantial meals and in two small bowls, two smaller versions of that meal will be our lunch the next day. Same for the lentil lasagna. Two substantial meals in the evening, two smaller ones for lunch. Risotto, again. So, we always have something of this for lunch the next day. We're quite flexible like that. 
Now, you can see I've laid it out over the seven days. We're flexible. I've got all of this to cook for next week. I've got it in the fridge, in the freezer. Like I said, I only need to buy ham, parmesan, bacon strips and a lemon. I need everything else would be the vegetables I buy anyway, but everything else is in stock. We might eat it on these days, we may not. Now something I do occasionally is I completely fill up my freezer and it probably lasts me then two to three months completely or longer, or longer. And what I did this month, because I knew it was going to be a financially tricky month, is I used our 150 euros of discretionary spending that we may have spent on DIY items, something for the garden. But this month, there isn't any money for that because we have filled up our freezer. And people said to me they would be interested to know what did I buy to fill up my freezer. Now, I also bought other household items, but this is what I bought for the freezer. Let's go through this. Now, I bought two big packs of chicken breasts. I then split that into eight pairs of chicken breasts. So I know I've got eight meals there. I then bought some big packs of sausages and split that down into eight packs of sausages. I also bought pork shoulder steaks. I bought six packs of lardons. They're just over a euro a pack. I bought four packs of sausage meat. I use those to make things like meatballs. A pack of fricadellen, they are instant ready-made meat, uh, like uh, um, German patties. I then bought two packs of frozen burgers. There's 10 in each. I know how many meals I've got. So I bought burgers, fricadellen, packs of sausages, lardons, pork shoulder steaks, uh, ordinary French sausages, chicken breasts, pork belly slices. I bought beef that I will use for slow cooking, smoked sausages, minced beef. Americans call that ground steak or hamburger meat. I then bought grated cheese which I uh, bagged into other bags and then I have things like burger rolls. So if I want to make Mike a quick and easy dinner of burger night, sliced bread, hot dog rolls. So those were, I also bought a big box of croissants that were going cheap and they're all in the freezer. So you can see what I've stocked up on here. This isn't the totality of what I spent the 150 euros on, but this is the bulk the backbone of our meals in our freezer for at least two months, at least two months. Now, just in case you're thinking, why? Why do you do this big freezer stock up? I did the last one in March, and that saw us right through until July. So you can see these big stock ups that I do being the backbone of the meals and the menu, keep me going for a really, really long time. And it's kind of like the food version of a sinking fund. You fill it up, you bring it down, and you fill it up again. And that's what I've done. These are the expensive items. The meat is, if you are a meat eater, you will know they are the expensive items on the food list. So if you have a chest freezer, and I have a chest freezer, if you do have the ability every now and then to be able to stock up on items that you know will be okay with your in your freezer, you could do that. It is something that I do. I'm very mindful because we are self-employed that our income can be up and our income can be down. And by having that kind of food security of the main expensive things in my freezer, just gives me that kind of security 
that food-wise, I've got plenty to see me through this month and probably plenty to see me right through next month as well. Every week in my meal planning, there are always some meals in there that are really super cheap that we enjoy, that people might look at it and go, oh, well, that's not perfect. Well, no, it's not. But it's one of two meals in the week that are not as perfect as they could be. And we all need them. We all need something that is an absolute budget stretcher. And with us this week, my budget stretching, pull it out of the larder meals, is refried beans, tortillas, and salad. Come down here and I'll show you what I've dragged out the larder. So I have Harina Massa. If you are in the UK you can buy this quite easily. I've got some spices that I keep in the cupboard, oil that I have in the cupboard, onion and garlic I've always got in the store and tins of beans. And that is the backbone of the meal I'm about to cook. Quick whiz through how I make my refried beans. You can use whatever beans you can get. In France, we seem to be able to get white beans or red beans, and I am using two small tins of red beans. I have drained them, I have rinsed them, and I have put them in fresh water. I am going to bring these to the boil so they soften so I can mash them. If you have a blender, you can use a blender, but I'm just going to mash them. I have one big onion that I have diced. I have uh, 30 millilitres of olive oil, two teaspoons of coriander, and one of hot chilli powder. If you can get fresh coriander, marvellous. It's not very easy to find in my part of France, so I'm using dried coriander. I will crush my garlic with my garlic press and add them in just at the end when I finished cooking my onions. refried beans all done and I'm going to leave them in the saucepan because they'll stay warm in there whilst I make my tortillas and the salad. Here is tonight's supper. Refried beans, homemade tortillas and salad. Well supper was absolutely delicious and it's just bits and pieces I had in my store cupboard. Now I have a question for you. How do you save money when you are cooking? How do you stretch your meal plan? Do you eat leftovers for lunch? Do you keep leftovers in the freezer and turn them into something else? Do you use up your sad carrots and your tired onions? Let me know. I love it when you comment and I always reply. If you enjoy the video, go on, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.